We're going to look next at how to start a new project in SeatMonk. The basis for all SeatMonk projects is an assembled annotated genome, so the first thing we need to do is to tell the program which version of which genome assembly we want to use for this project. We do this by selecting File and New Project. When we first do this we see a list of the genomes we currently have installed on the system. This is a new installation so we don't have any at the moment, so I'm going to fetch one from our servers. To do this press Import New. You'll see an alphabetical list of available genomes. I'm going to look under M, down to Mus Musculus, and then select the correct assembly, in this case NCBI M36. It's important that the assembly that you choose here is the same as the assembly that you mapped your data against in the first place. I'm going to download this, and then I get taken back to my initial genome selector, and I can select the genome I've just imported first time you load a genome in, it'll take a few seconds for SeekMonk to parse the genome and to sort out the annotations, uh, but on subsequent loading it should be pretty much instantaneous. Once the genome is finished importing and you can see the genome browser view appear, then we can start to bring some data in. To bring data into SeekMonk, you go into the File menu import data and then choose the appropriate format. You'll see that we have predefined importers for some of the more popular sequence formats uh, either from specific alignment programs or just generic formats but if you don't know the format that your file is in or it's in an unusual format you also have the option of doing a text import where you can tell the program what your format your sequence is in and that's what I'm going to use here. You can then select the files that you want to bring in in this case I'm bringing two files in. You can bring in as many files in one go as you like as long as they're all in the same format. Because this is a text import I now need to tell the program where to find the, pro the information it needs within my file. The way to do this is by filling in these boxes on the right hand side of the import dialog. The first one says what character delimits the different columns in my file. It's guessed at tab and it happens to be right second one allows me to exclude any header at the top. In this case I don't have a header so I don't need to. And then the next columns ask where particular pieces of information are located. So my chromosome information is in column 1, my start is in column 2, my end is in column 3, and that's all I actually need to supply, but I also have strand information here which is in column 4. A couple of options at the bottom uh, which are applicable to all import filters. One is I can choose to extend each read as I bring it in. So although I may only have a 40 base pair read, I can choose to extend that up to sort of 300 bases. This is useful for single end chip seek analysis where you can get a more realistic view of the fragments you imported. And finally, you can also choose to remove duplicates at the import stage so they never appear in the program. You can choose to remove these later on and you can also ignore them when quantitating. So you don't have to do it now, but the option's there. I now choose to import the data and the data will start to come in. It takes a couple of minutes normally to bring in a new file into SeekMonk, uh, mostly limited by the speed at which you can read the data off the disk. You can see that the data is coming in at the rate of a couple of hundred thousand lines a second, so it gets through it fairly quickly, but with some files these days coming in at 30 million reads, it can still take a few minutes to do that. You'll see that after the data is loaded, it then caches the data out to disk so that it doesn't hold it all in memory and then it will start loading the second file. So you just need enough memory to be able to hold all of one data set in memory uh, so it can temporarily work out uh, the, the cached files from that. When the data comes into the program it will initially be given the name of the file from which it was imported and in many cases this is not a particularly useful name to give the file. Uh, things like Illumino's data files will just be named after the lane in the flow cell that they were from. So we'll see how we can rename those files to put that in. Once the data is finished importing you may or may not see a list of warnings on here. There are some warnings on here that are basically harmless and there are some that might be important so you need to look through this. The first thing to see is how many warnings you got. So I've just imported somewhere around 20 million sequences and I've got 447 warnings. So most of my data was absolutely fine. The warning I see on here is that I had a chromosome called chromosome M in my data and it couldn't find that. And that's simply a mismatch in the naming scheme of my mapped data and my annotated genome where the genome uses MT for the mitochondrion and this uses M. So I could either rename the data in my import file or in this case I'm just going to ignore it. 
One thing that you may see that is important to note, you may find that you get reads that are supposedly mapping to a position which is beyond the end of the chromosome. If you see that and the mapped position is more than a few bases over the end of the chromosome, it's nearly always an indication that you've selected the wrong genome assembly when you started your project and it's worth going back and stopping at that point and checking that it's right because otherwise you may misinterpret your data later on. Right, now that my data's in, if I look in the left hand side here, I'll see that under my data sets folder I now have two entries which are the two entries that I've just brought in. The names on here are just the names of the files so if I want to change those I can right mouse click on them, select rename and then just give it a shortened file name. I can do the same on the other one as well to give me sensible file names all round. If I ended up with files that were from the same library and I just sequenced them more than once, I can combine them together into something called a data group. If I have biological replicates that are the same biological condition but from different libraries, I can combine them into a replicate set. And it's a good idea to do this right at the start. So in this case, uh, I'll just do a, an example of a replicate set to show these going together, but it's the same idea for both. To do this, you go into the data menu and say either edit groups for data groups or edit replicate sets for sets. I'm going to make a new replicate set that's going to be called ES because both of these are ES cell samples. And having made that, I can now add my files to that and I'll see under my replicate sets that I have my ES set group on there. At this point, having imported all your data, it's probably a good idea to save your project before you go any further. So to save a project, I simply go to File, Save Project, select where you want to save it to, and save. It'll take a few seconds to save this, it should save faster than it loaded, and then your data is all going to be safe so that you can go on and do more work on it with a guaranteed restore point from it. and the data is now saved so my project is now initially set up.